Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for moving up. So I'm, I'm 17 years old, a high school senior, 101 pounds soaking wet. I have not played sports in four years. Yet I'm standing in front of three Army sergeants at a recruiting station in Miami, and they ask me, why are you here? And I tell them, I want to join the Army band. <laughs> they laugh, too. But one of the sergeants, Sergeant Kyle Fleener, a good old boy from Tennessee, agreed to work with me to arrange an audition. That audition involved my very first airplane ride from Miami to Atlanta. And on the way back from that flight, something didn't feel right. Waiting for me to hear how it went with Sergeant Fleener. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to join the Army band. But I really liked flying on that airplane. I'd like to join, jump out of planes, and be the best trained medic in the Army. Well, son, uh, you've described an Army Special Forces soldier. Sergeant Fleener, I, I don't want to be a military policeman. No, Special Forces is the Green Berets. Hands me a brochure. Sergeant Fleener, the, these men look like superheroes. I, I can't do that. And he looked me dead in the eyes and he said, yes, you can. And I believed him. Now there's just one problem. In order to become a Green Beret and jump out of planes, you have to weigh 103 pounds and get a doctor's waiver. Otherwise, when you jump out of the plane, you're going to hit the side. So with a diet heavy on milkshakes, I got up to a whopping 114 and joined uh, two weeks after high school graduation, still 17 years old. And all along the way and everywhere I looked, I had people telling me I was going to fail. In fact, my dad bet me $1,000 I would get sent home from basic training. He bet me $10,000 I would not get my beret. Um, he says, I'll never die broke because he will always owe me money. So, um, but the, the training to become a Green Beret for me was grueling. Um, the hardest part was the rucksack marches. The speed of the march was anywhere between 9 and 12 minute miles. Um, the weight I was carrying was half my body weight to all my body weight, depending on the day. And the worst part was just when you thought it was over and you could see the compound, the lights, and you're finishing up, because they were always before dawn. The cadre, you'd come into the gate, and the cadre would march you right out the other side of the gates. We called it a mind something, mind something. Um, but the, the, the problem was we didn't know if we are going to go an extra five minutes or an extra five miles. And that was the point. When people no longer know when the pain and suffering is going to end, they tend to drop like flies, never to become Green Berets. I just knew, somehow, my 17-year-old mind knew that pain is temporary, quitting is forever. I didn't want to tell that story about, well, I tried to become a Green Beret. But that adversity was teaching me something um, about myself, about persistence and determination and grit. And, and this insight came about because I faced a real test, a, a crucible I endured to earn my Green Beret. Now, I don't know if you can tell which one is me in the photo, um, but that, that was, a, it was a proud moment. Now, a, a crucible is, is a ceramic container in which metals are melted and formed, forged into something stronger. It also describes a severe test in which we can be shaped into something indomitable. When we create our own crucible, we change our narrative. When you lead a crucible, you change the narrative of your team. And why should we care about this, this narrative? Because when we're too comfortable, we don't stretch ourselves, we don't innovate, and we don't align our goals with our values and what we hold dear. So one of the things that I do is I, I lead expeditions, and, and we call them crucibles. And they're a combination of military and executives. And, and um, this is uh, Patagonia. Um, rocky mountains and glaciers and moraine. And we're hiking in a trance-like cadence across a glacier that seems to go on forever. Um, it's half military veterans, half executives. And all of a sudden, from the front, we hear, we're at the Poner. 
owner.